in the previous chapter, chapter 6, we discussed the different uh, scheduling algorithms, CPU scheduling algorithms, to be able to uh, make efficient use of the CPU as a resource. And uh, in the previous chapters, uh, the way to optimize the use of the CPU is to allow multiple processes to run because we know that at some point uh, a process as we've characterized it will have a CPU bound operation or IO operation so it's an alternating a CPU and IO and if you have multiple processes and they are uh, running at the same time then they will need resources and as these processes contend for resources especially if the resources are limited if one process is waiting for another process to give up uh, the resource it needs but the other process is not giving it up then there is a possibility of deadlocks so in this chapter we're going to somehow characterize formally in a way formally characterize deadlocks and uh, offer solutions on how to address deadlocks so this will be the topics that will be covered in this chapter so to start with uh, dealing with deadlocks we first need to define a model because the idea of having a model is it allows us to simplify the analysis and the character characterization of certain events or scenarios so in the study of deadlocks we're going to look uh, we're going to use this uh, system model so we have a system consisting of resources and uh, the resources is of a particular type meaning uh, uh, an example would be uh, CPU cycles, memory space, I.O. devices. So we can uh, have them as resource types. And for each resource type, we can have a number of instances. For example, if we have a disk resource type, HDD, and if the system has three hard disk hard disks then we have three instances of resource type hard disk drive for example and in addition to the resources uh, having several instances the resources should follow a certain uh, flow in terms of utilizing the resources okay so again you have a system system composed of processes trying to uh, use a resource each resource is of a particular type and each resource type can have one or more instances and to describe, to characterize the use of these resources, it must follow uh, these steps. The first one is a uh, request. So a process, for example, uh, uh, a text editor process, it would like to open a file and the file is located on the disk. So the disk is the resource type and in a system wherein you only have one hard disk then you only have one instance of hard disk so the text editor process 
will not uh, will request for 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 this for access to the disk okay uh, if that request so the the text error will tell the OS uh, I need access to this file which is located on the disk so via system call it will form the kernel that F let's say for example F open so F open is part of the standard library and then uh, we have uh, the open system call which is implemented in the operating system that open system call will have to read, uh, read the, the disk to locate the file so that's the requesting part but at that at that point if that request cannot be executed because some other process is still uh, using the disk then uh, the text editor process will have to wait okay, to be able to read that disk once uh, that disk is released by another process that is using the disk, then it can now use uh, the text editor process will now be able to use the disk and read the file. And after that, the text uh, editor process will release the uh, the disk. Okay, so that will be the system model for characterizing deadlocks. So, to formally characterize a deadlock, given our system model, uh, these are the conditions that must hold simultaneously. Meaning, all of this should be true in the system for a deadlock to occur. So, the first condition is mutual exclusion. Uh, meaning only one process at a time can use a resource. Given the disk example, uh, the text editor example, and the resource there is the disk, then only one process can uh, read or write to the disk uh, uh, at a time. So there is mutual exclusion in that. The next one is hold and wait. A process holding at least one resource is waiting to acquire additional resources held by other processes. So, uh, in the example of the text editor process, that uh, text editor process might be using a certain shared memory area so that shared memory area is one resource that the text editor process has and at the same time still trying to access the disk so it's waiting to acquire the disk resource so in the given scenario that we have then there is hold and wait the text editor process has access to a shared memory region and it's trying to access uh, the disk and that's hold and wait. The third uh, condition is no preemption. A resource can be released only voluntarily by the process holding it after that process has completed its task. So given the text editor scenario, let's say that Firefox is using the disk. So since Firefox is given access to the disk, it is Firefox, uh, the Firefox process that can release the disk. Okay. There are no other processes that can take uh, that disk away from Firefox. Firefox process has to release the, the disk voluntarily. Okay, so that is no preemption and uh, there is circular weight uh, the idea of the condition of uh, circular weight is that there should exist a set of processes p0 p1 to pn of waiting processes that is such that uh, p0 is waiting for a resource that is held by p1 p1 is waiting for a resource that is held by p2 so for example, that uh, in the example that uh, 
we have we have the text editor process it's trying to get access to a disk and then uh, the text editor has uh, access to let's say a network socket or shared memory part of a uh, network socket so once they have that uh, circular weight then we can guarantee that uh, there is a, a possibility or there is actually a deadlock that is 